All right, let's bring in Boot Barn CEO Jim Conroy here with us on set. Jim, welcome. Good to have you with us. Well, Who's for buying us. boots? Are, is the growth coming from women or is the growth coming from men or both? It's both. It's across the board. We've um, Most of the product that we sell is very functional in nature. We often say our core customer feeds America, builds America, and protects America. And that's a lot of people across the U.S. And they come in and they buy a pair of boots or jeans or a jacket or a hat, and they wear through it, and they come back and get another is pair. Is it mostly working attire, working boots, uh, ropers, uh, work boots, as opposed to fa the, the lovely fashionable boots that you're wearing? Again, it's both. But what, what keeps the lights on is more of the functional nature of the product. So the replacement cycle is roughly twice a year. It's not, you know, these, this pair of boots that I'm wearing will last 10 years. Most boots uh, that most of our customers wear will, will last six months or 12 months or 18 months, but they'll wear through them wow. and come back and get another pair. Yeah. It's like running shoes almost. Do you know what your typical household uh, income is? Sure. Our uh, median income is about $75,000. Okay, because I was trying to figure out where in the spectrum from Dollar General to Costco you fall as we try to figure out how the consumer is doing and, and who is that consumer. So at $75,000, how would you say your typical consumer is doing these days? So our consumer is still pretty solid, I would say. Um, the single thing that would impact our customer and therefore our business would be blue-collar employment. And blue-collar employment right now is still pretty strong. Um, when you hear about some of the layoffs and more of the high-tech firms, that really doesn't impact us nearly as much. We are ensuring that we bring a, a value-oriented product to our customer as well, just kind of being cognizant of consumer sentiment. But by and large, our, our customers pretty pretty strong. Where uh, geographically are you expanding, number one? And where would, what kinds of um, malls, shopping centers, stand on, where would I find your stores? Sure. So we have 356 stores in 44 states. Much of our growth now is in the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. So uh, we've put stores in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia, uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and there's still plenty of room for additional. And are, they, are these in, in large malls? Are they in strip malls? Where? They're mostly in um, super power centers. So a co-tenant for us would be something like a Home Depot uh, or Dick Sporting Goods. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I see. Okay. What about the show Paramount? I mean, how much we, we joke a little about how these major cultural moments, or I'm sorry, Yellowstone. Yellowstone, what did I say? Yeah, Paramount, but it's on Paramount. <laughs> on Paramount, thank you. You know, did that really drive interest in yeah. Western wear? I, I think it has driven a, a bit of interest. If you think about our business over the last three years has grown 100% in top line revenue. If wow. you look at the other publicly traded companies in our space, they've grown about 15%. So I would, I would give about 15% of our credit to a show like Yellowstone and the 85% of the credit to the 10,000 people in the stores across the country and the 500 people in the corporate office. Where are the boots made? Boots are made, um, some in the U.S., some in Mexico, and some in China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you sell, do you sell lots of different brands? All the brands that I would know as Ariat or Tony... Tony Lama, Tony yes. Tony Lama, yes. yep. uh, uh, Lucchese. So we are absolutely a house of brands. Uh, so we have a, a wide array of national brands, the ones you've mentioned. We also have our own brands. We have 10 exclusive brands. Oh. And the exclusive brand part of our business is now about 34% uh, of sales. So it's about a third of our business is brands that we've developed over the last 10 years or so. Yeah. Are you ready for the post, you know, it, things go in fashion and then they go out of fashion. So after doubling revenue in three years, which is incredible, and having, you know, Yellowstone and all the rest of it, if people start to sour on Western wear, is there a sense of, okay, let's evolve the company beyond just that? Sure. Well, we, we're in the middle of an evolution anyway. We used to be Western and work, and then we've extended into sort of a more casual country lifestyle. So we believe that we're just getting started and going after customers that might be fishing, hunting, camping, or just being outside in general. So as we continue to expand within that market, if there is a fashion trend that then works against us, we think there's more customers to be had in this sort of adjacent consumer segment. The, the footwear world, and it's not just footwear that you sell, obviously, but boot is in your name, uh, <laughs> after all. Uh, it, it's interesting to me. What, what you're wearing, these are heavy Gear, these are heavy gear. And on the other hand, you see people uh, wearing sneakers to work, wearing sneakers in dress settings. Right. So you've got the lightest kind of shoe on the one hand. That's right. And a heavier uh, piece of footwear on the other. That's right. And I think that maybe more of an urban dynamic. 
if you were, we often joke if you were to fly from New York to Los Angeles and look down for five hours of that five and a half hour flight. There are lots you're of looking, jokes about this. You're Be looking, careful. No, you're looking at our customer. And those customers are wearing cowboy hats to keep the sun off their face and, and boots because they're working with horses mm -hmm. or they're outside um, and, and need a sturdy uh, pair of, of footwear. Uh, that is right. safe.